Hey, Ronnie here from Four Wheeling in Western Australia. In this video, I'm going to cover some items that I have in the vehicle within arm's reach. Now, the previous video I did from inside the cab was 10 good tips inside the cab when you're four wheeling. This video, on the other hand, like I already mentioned, is more about items that I recommend, highly recommend, that you have in the vehicle around you so you can have them for quick access to do the tasks at hand while you're out there four wheeling and you can keep going. So all we need now is a chair and a table and I will show you everything. Voila, here we are. Now all these items on this table are what's within reach of me when I'm sitting in the driver's seat. When I need to get out and just get on with things. So we'll start with what's in my door trim on the side pocket. Now, what I have there is, we'll start with the gloves. So I've got two different types of gloves here. So I'll just go for these cheap pro-choice gloves. Probably don't last as long as the leather glove, but they're fine for the job anyway. Then I've got these Ansel Heavy Duty X-Large. I use these for filling up with diesel out of my jerry cans, so I don't get diesel on my hands. And when you're in the middle of nowhere, uh, and you will get diesel on your hands when you're using jerry cans, you don't want to waste precious water just to wash your hands. So that's why I carry these. Then we'll move on to the saws I have. These are for trimming on the tracks. Now, this was my old one, no brand name. I think I got it just from the local hardware, but this was actually really good. It started to go a little bit blunt on me, so I went for a brand name one. Fisker's Power Tooth Razor Sharp Teeth. The teeth are pretty sharp. I lost the tip, however, on the last trip. What happens is when you use them, and sometimes when you're cutting the branch in the right spot, it'll pinch on the edge of the blade. You can see on that one there, it's a bit skew with. That's what happens to this one. But you'll be so surprised how well these kind of saws cut. Now there are some real cheap ones out there. I was lucky to get a cheap one that's really good, but there are some cheap ones out there. They are rubbish. You, you'll be cutting forever. Um, so it's a bit of trial and error. But these two, I know work perfectly. And I've cut hardwood jar with this at home. Um, live trees, dead trees, they will cut through it. Then we move on to the Gerber. This was a gift I got. This stays in the front with me as well, but only when I'm in the bush. I wouldn't carry this around the streets because uh, you get in trouble with that. I use this mainly to just get rid of the branches. Um, it's the thin branches. If I just got to go out and trim that, then I use this. But if I could only pick one to take with me, it'll be a saw over the machete. Then we'll move on to other stuff in the cab. Now these are just randomly placed. There's this one, this hat, bush hat, usually lives in my back seat. Now a wide brim hat or a bush hat, I highly recommend it. This is um, quite a new one actually, replace my old one. And then we'll move straight on to the Bushnell binoculars. Now if you are a lead vehicle, I highly recommend getting a good set of binoculars. As long as they got the distance, the quality on them doesn't really matter, to be honest. These replace my old crappy second-hand ones, which I bought from a second-hand shop. These ones are the 10x42 Bushnell Legend Ultra HD FOV 340FT. Now, these are bloody awesome. This is probably the first good set of binoculars I've ever bought, so I'm not the guy to ask for advice about binoculars, but what I can say is these are way better than the ones I have, and I'm very happy with these. I don't feel I need to upgrade ever. I put them aside. Two-way radio, GME. This is a free water. Decent range on it. It's recreational radio, I consider. I wouldn't consider this like a commercial grade, top quality one, but it's still really good. You can drop this in mud, water, sand and it's still pretty durable and I have dropped it many times. Really good, always comes with me on the trips and when I leave the car this is what I guide people with. Next we'll go into torches, flashlights I carry in the vehicle. Now I highly recommend having a small torch or flashlight. This one here, I love this torch. This is probably one of my favorite small torches ever. You can hold it with your mouth just don't do it once everyone else has had a go or borrowed it. Um, it charges via your DC, you see here. So this, this is, lives in my cigarette lighter plug and it's always charged and it's always there. It doesn't go missing. 
I can pull it out and find things in the car. I also use it when I do my photography and stuff at night to see the settings on the camera. I'll pull it out and bring it out and hold it in my mouth. Brilliant torch. Then on to something a bit bigger. Now, this one here was sent to me or sent to us by Coleman. And one thing I will say, it is really bloody bright. This is the brightest torch I've ever had. Um, I'm sure there's brighter ones out there, but this is the brightest one that I've ever had. It's an LED torch, 700 lumens comes out of this, and it runs on AA batteries. Now, I'm going to give you more information on it on a torch video, because I've got a whole heap of torches. I've used heaps of torches over, over the years. So this one here I would use for if I've hit an animal at the night time, you know, animal strikes at night, have a look under the vehicle if I've hit a stump or something to check for damage. Someone's working on a car, this is the kind of torch you want to hold down there. Now to what's under my chair. Of course, I have the uh, rapid tie deflator and a tie gauge. Now, the reason why I have a tie gauge is because rapid tie deflator, you have to screw this thing on to see the pressure, right? This one here, I just hop out and check the pressure. So these always come with me, no matter what. Then onto my tools, my tool bag. So I have a roll mat here, spanners, these are ring spanners and they have like the uh, ratchet, ratchety thing, I think that's what you call it, and holds my big screwdrivers and then in here I have various other tools. Now I'll go into more detail about tools I carry because I could go on about this all, you know, this is a whole other video, but my main point here is under my seats, anyone has any issue, straight out, sort it out, we're back on the track again. So far, all the trips I've done, I'm the only one that carries the tools under the seat and people tend to borrow my tools because they know they're easy to get to. So if you do start doing this, you'll probably find that all your uh, friends or mates are gonna start using the tools out of your car. Um, I kind of call this cutting through the lazy barrier. And the lazy barrier, if something's too hard to get to, you do it later, or you just don't do it at all. So I highly recommend tools under your seat. Radio, a quick recap again. Chemical gloves, just cheap gloves. Cutting equipment for the tracks and trails. Binoculars, especially if you are leading a trip, lead vehicle torches, a little one and a big one, rapid tire deflator and a tire gauge, bush hat, radio, handheld radio and my favourite of all, condensed tool kits with good quality tools. For any more information on the gadgets and gear that I showed you on the table before, there is a link down below or a clickable link up in the corner there, which will take you straight to a web page dedicated to this particular topic. You can subscribe right here. Thank you very much for watching. And there is a video here on 10 tips for inside the cab, which I highly recommend you watch. So if you have any comments, put them down below and I would like to know what you think and if there's anything else that you carry that I haven't or haven't got or don't carry in the cab, let me know what you do. Cheers. See ya.